as I said, here's more of the text messages. I don't know whether we can read them or not. Some of these larger ones go into serious detail. So maybe pause the video and read them because they are truly, truly shocking. And I mean that. So after the Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler fight was cancelled just last week, the speculation was rife across the internet. Leg break, drunk, in rehab, hair transplant, all seem a little bit ridiculous now in light of this story that I just uncovered last night. This is possibly one of the most shocking and disgusting stories that I've heard in a long time. And I'm going to have to be extremely careful how I portray this story. I'm going to have to use words like alleged repeatedly here. I'm going to have to try dance around the algorithm over on this platform because because there must be a reason that nobody is actually covering this story. There must be a reason why people aren't talking about it. I've seen the independent journalist Jason Burmis really going in on this story and I've seen some really big YouTube MMA content creators be tagged in these stories and still I've heard no one come out and talk about it. We do have the likes of former MMA fighter John Fitch and we have one of the most respected journalists in the game right now Luke Thomas actually posting an ambiguous tweet about this story about Conor McGregor and what could quite possibly be the actual reason why he's out of this fight with Michael Chandler. Before we jump into all of this stuff, if you could like the video if you like it and try subscribe and share if you can because as I said this is getting demonetized. I'm literally doing this video for one reason and one reason only that is to tell the truth because people have been jumping into my comment section, people have been jumping into my live streams asking me about these alleged assaults and I didn't know too much and I think I covered it last week I said I don't know I haven't heard anything and there's a reason why I haven't heard it because it's suppressed. This information is not getting out to people that are on the other side of the pond in terms of America. It's being released in dribs and drabs by national broadcast here in Ireland. It's even been leaked by the national broadcaster here in Ireland, which they have suffered massive fines for putting out Conor McGregor's name. We'll get to that as well in a few minutes. I guess the best place to start with the whole thing is right here. You can see Luke Thomas put out a tweet on the 17th of June, which is two days after the bout was officially cancelled. Woman suing Conor McGregor attacked in her own home by masked burglars. Fairly ambiguous, not putting his opinion in there, but he still did more than Ariel Helwani in terms of of putting this story out there because if we talk about investigative journalism which Michael Bisping hates well Ariel doesn't seem to have done his work or maybe he's just being the shill that he is let's give credit to Luke Thomas for just putting it out there so what exactly is Luke Thomas talking about so if we jump over here to the same article that Luke Thomas tweeted it says that woman suing Conor McGregor is victim of horrifying home invasion one hospitalized with stab wound I won't go into crazy details and I'll try to dance around it but basically what the Irish male have reported is that two Two unidentified individuals stormed into a house located in Dublin's south side in the early morning hours. There was a woman and her child, they were unharmed, and her partner slash husband who came out of the bedroom when he heard the ruckus and saw these masked men ended up getting himself pierced, badly injured and going to hospital. And it turns out that this woman is one of the many women, I didn't even notice one of the many women that have cases pending against Conor McGregor. Her story is a particularly horrific one, you can read the details of it online. I wouldn't even get away with reading one line from that statement on this platform. It's absolutely shocking. It's tied directly to Conor McGregor, allegedly. When we get to the bottom of this story, I have it highlighted here. I find it very interesting that this exact sentiment or sentence or statement shows up at the bottom of almost every article that's written about these allegations and the possibility of Conor McGregor being allegedly related to them. It says that there's no evidence that this attack on the woman is in any way related to her case against Conor McGregor. We jump back over here to Luke Thomas who just put this story out ambiguously and he put it out on June the 17th which coincidentally was two days after the fight was cancelled and if we jump over here we can see that McGregor pulls out of Chandler fight that's June the 14th so we'll see that there's a two slash three day discrepancy between the fight being cancelled for some crazy ambiguous non-reason and one of the victims who alleges that Conor McGregor attacked her having her house broken into by masked men and randomly people get seriously injured and you're kind of thinking okay they're not related these things happen all the time and that's what I thought and you can see it in the comment section you have loads of people that are shilling for Conor McGregor they're jumping in they're going this is probably some crackhead who deserved it apparently or something like that you pop over here and we have a story from February 2023 woman who claimed that she was assaulted on Conor McGregor's yacht 
drops lawsuit. Samantha Murphy, who claimed her arm was broken in an alleged attack, had previously claimed she had to jump from the boat into the water to escape. Again, the details of this are horrific. This chick ends up getting invited onto Conor McGregor's boat, having a party, then alleges that she got viciously beaten and got dumped overboard, where she got picked up by the Red Cross, brought to the police station. So this woman claimed that she was assaulted, she got her arm broken previously, everything like that. And it's understood then as she went and she filed papers to terminate the case, possibly because there's massive payouts been given by Conor McGregor, allegedly. And if you go through all these alleged attack stories, there always seems to be a million euros, three million euros, two million euros payouts happening all across the board, except for the person who had her partner attacked. They don't want that payout. They've refused three million, apparently, and want to go to court and see this thing play all the way out. So after jumping off the boat, after being allegedly attacked, she makes her way to a hospital. She goes to the police. She files all the official paperwork and then she suddenly drops it. But here's the interesting highlighted bit at the bottom of this news story as well. Last week, the Irish Mirror revealed that Gardy launched a probe after a brick was thrown through her window just before dawn on January the 19th. And there was an attempt to burn out her car. There is no suggestion that either attack was connected to the woman's allegations against Conor McGregor. Is that not bizarre, weird and shocking? These are just two isolated incidents of alleged attacks. Have their houses firebombed, people being seriously injured, rushed to hospital, windows getting blasted in. And you're going, okay, man, this is a coincidence. This could happen to anybody, right? And you're kind of saying, yeah, but Conor McGregor's a billionaire. Why would he be hanging around with this sort of criminal activity? But he does. He's actually tied into huge criminal activity. We have stories like this. Aoife McGregor goes public with relationship with Kinahan gangster Graham the Wig Whelan. Aoife shared an image of her together in Connor's Black Forge Inn days after Whelan's release from Mountjoy Prison. And for people who don't know, the Kinahan family are one of the largest operations, not just in Ireland, internationally for serious criminal activity. Connor McGregor's sister is partners with one of these lads. These guys frequent his pub all the time. Here we have Connor McGregor pictured partying with senior Kinahan associate Graham the Wig Whelan. We have stories like this where it says cops probe if Connor McGregor's pub attack linked to sister's friendship with Kinahan member Graham the Wig Whelan. Gardy are trying to establish if a petrol bomb attack on Connor's pub was a threat against the MMA star. So when you have stories of Conor McGregor's pub being attacked with petrol bombs, then you have stories of women who allege that he assaulted them having their cars attacked with petrol bombs. Surely you can kind of put two and two together and maybe come up with four or maybe that's just speculation. So this chick having her windows broke and her car fire bombed has absolutely nothing got to do with her accusations towards Conor McGregor and neither does the other victim who is actively pursuing a case against Conor McGregor and just had her house invaded by masked men. None of, there's no correlation to be made here whatsoever. This is all just allegations, speculation and conspiracy theories, right? You dig a little bit deeper into this story and you see articles coming out of the National Irish Independent news outlet. A sports star at the center of this claim says that this was very consensual. That's interesting, isn't it? A well-known sports star arrested for allegedly this to a young girl has claimed that it was consensual. The high-profile star who has a long-term partner and children was released, but detectives are preparing a file for the DPP. This well-known sports star with a partner and kids has actually been in with the police, being questioned, and has said that this allegation was actually a consensual enterprise, that it wasn't a forced interaction whatsoever. That's interesting. But I know what you're saying. How do we know what sports star this is? This could be any Irish sports star. I don't know any other guys that are famous, but Rory McIlroy. I think that guy pretends to be English, to be honest with you. Um, even though he had funding from the Irish sports board all the way up through his childhood. And when he got to a certain age, then he decided that, you know what? I'm actually English. That's what I think the story is with him. So it's not him. What about this story here? Leaked memo about sports stars assault leaves RTE open to data fine. So RTE is radio television. Sharon, that is the national broadcaster of Ireland, and they have left themselves open to a huge fine, I believe 250,000, for leaking a document. I wonder what that document could be that the national broadcaster and news broadcaster leaked. Coincidentally, I actually have the leaked document right here. This is the RTE leak that shows that Conor McGregor was arrested on suspicion of assault in Dublin and questioned. Okay. That ties in with what we just read earlier in terms of him saying it was consensual. This is making sense. Down here, we have this leaked file that says not for publication or broadcast. 
Conor McGregor presented himself to the Gardaí at 5pm yesterday in connection with a recent assault allegation in the city. Gardaí have 24 hours to question the MMA star. This is in bold writing where it says not for publication and broadcast and that's exactly what some journalists decided they wanted to do. They wanted to broadcast this whole thing. They wanted to get this news story out there in some way, shape or form, which they did. Now there's also leaked text messages that I definitely can't read but I'll put them up on screen for a second and the names that are actually tweeting in these leaked messages are legit legitimate reporters who have done work on Conor McGregor throughout the years. So here's some of the, the messages. I'm not going to read them out. I'm going to try leave them on screen enough for you to read them. But you can see that this interaction here, Michelle Dardis and Pippa Doyle, who are they? They could be randomers. This could be faked. Well, I popped over and I just did a little bit of research on them. And as you can see, they work for VIP magazine. They're journalists and they put out stories all the time on Conor McGregor and his family. But a lot of these stories seem to be from before all these allegations started and there's no new news stories from these lads which is interesting here we'll jump over to this Pippa chick she's putting out stories in VIP magazine about Connor's family about Connor's girlfriend about all this type of stuff but suspiciously it seems to have stopped right around the time of the allegations as I said here's more of the text messages I don't know whether we can read them or not some of these larger ones go into serious detail so maybe pause the video and read them because they are truly truly shocking and I mean that. And that's what made me kind of pay attention to this news story last night. And as I said, if you're still watching the video and you're still paying attention and you're reading these, maybe subscribe and maybe share this video and try to get this message out there. This will either be the type of video that gets completely shut down, demonetized and nobody gets to see it. Or it could be something more. It could be the answer to all the questions in terms of speculation about the Michael Chandler fight being off. But I think it's bigger than that and it's more important than that. And if there is any truth to these allegations, then we need to be talking talking about it and fair play to Luke Thomas and John Fitch and Jason Burmes for covering this because I don't see anybody else covering it. We even have statements from elected officials in the Irish government that say famous Irish sports star celebrities strutting around with impunity despite this assault allegation against them claims Dublin TD Root Coppinger. Are women to go into hiding every time such a figure decides to go on a night out? She asked the Taoiseach, which is our Prime Minister. And she goes on to detail and show evidence in the government buildings about the actual attack that happened on this night. And I can't even show you what she's holding up in her hands and I can't even talk about it. Maybe I'll put a link to this in the description because this is worth reading. But when you read what she's actually talking about, it's, a, it's the same attack that we initially spoke about that happened back in 2018. The same attack where just recently that person had their house and their front doors kicked in by armed thugs who didn't just threaten, they actually physically harmed people, could have been life-threatening, and these people ended up having to go to the hospital. Is there any correlation? That's what we're saying. So I hope I did okay in terms of putting together a cohesive narrative here with the help of really good journalists like Jason Burmes and even Luke Thomas putting out the ambiguous tweet was very very helpful as well to get this new story out there. I'm sure I'm going to get hit in the comments with people that will come in and defend them and say that these are all chicks that are looking to make money and quite possibly so. We will see what the outcome is after these people get their day in court. If people keep accepting payouts and then having their houses burnt out and their cars burnt out, that's a little bit shady. That needs to be talked about. It shouldn't be buried in Reddit forums over here in Ireland and nobody else in the world gets to talk about it. And we all talk about hair transplants and foot injuries and everything like that when quite possibly what could be behind the cancellation of one of the biggest fights ever is the fact that we have these crazy shocking astounding allegations flying everywhere over here in Ireland let me know your thoughts down below and as I said do me a favor because it's a spicy one like it subscribe share it if you can I appreciate you cheers